Off-road riding has always been about the great outdoors, the thrill of single track, and for a lot of people, having a really good workout that's fun. Now, as the sport's progressed over the years, it's divided into different identities, different niches, different genres, all under the same name of mountain biking. And seemingly the latest is down country, basically the adaption of a cross country bike to make it go better downhill. But how is that different to a trail bike? Well, thanks to Shimano that have specced up a couple of bikes for us. We'll give you the lowdown, but more importantly, take them for a ride. A generation ago, mountain biking was born. Well, cross-country mountain biking, to be exact. Now, over the last 30 years, things have really changed from those mountain bike come roadies that we were originally on. And now we have a whole plethora of choices, everything from our long travel downhill bikes to our brutal enduro bikes and our trail bikes. But there's still a bit of a gap. Our trail bikes typically have around 140 mil of rear wheel travel, but our cross-country bikes can have as little as 80 millimeters. But what if you want something that's a little bit more nimble, a featherweight flyer compared to your middleweight bloater? Well, cross-country bikes, they're fantastic. They're super refined, super lightweight, and in the right place, they're super fast. But what if you want something that's a little bit more relaxed, something that's a bit more of a party animal, a bit more fun? So, Neil, what you're talking about, could it be referred to as down country? Triple XC, sexy XC. Well, down country. It seems to have gained momentum in the mountain bike world, with even manufacturers starting to term their bikes as down country. But I think we have to credit Pink Bike for this one, Mike Levy more specifically. So, Mike, trademarks with you. Check is in the post. It's not. So, today I'm riding a souped up cross country bike, an Orbea Oiz TR. Cross country bike, you say? So, let me guess 27 gears and a triple, a handlebar as wide as a chopstick and a saddle skewing your rectum like a toffee apple. Not quite, Henry. Times have changed. Uh, yeah, cross country might be the bread and butter of mountain biking, but things have progressed as of down country bikes. I've got wide bars, uh, short stem, bigger fork, dropper post, and one by 12, a bit like a trail bike. Yeah, sounds familiar. And it's funny, I'll be riding a trail bike today. Now I think trail biking is one of the most ambiguous terms in mountain biking. Some people race EWS stages on their trail bikes. For us, when we think trail bike, we think something that's typically around 130, 140 mil travel, all day capabilities, and the Canyon Neuron we'll be riding is very pedal efficient. So realistically, if you were thinking about getting a down country bike, that would be the sort of bike you'd be comparing it against. All right, Henry, make it simple for me. What is the main differences between a down country bike and a trail bike? Well, 30 seconds on each bike, let's do it. In bike design, the devil is often in the detail. Before, we've looked at the real differences between two and four pop brakes. Well, today, there are gonna be lots of differences like that. Small, but not inconsequential. Added together, they really do make a difference to how your bike rides. Shimano have invited us out again to examine this exciting new breed of bike. Neil, take us through your bear. A World Cup cross-country frame, but with an added 20 mil of travel. A step cast fork, again, 120 mil of travel. Two pot brakes, 180 mil rotor front, 160 on the back. One by 12 with a 1051 cassette and a 34 ring. Shimano XTR M9100 pedals. A carbon fiber frame with linkage, saddle, bars, stem, stem spacers and bottle cage. The Neuron uses a traditional 130mm fork paired to 130mm of rear travel. A slightly more aggressive cockpit is also paired to slightly more aggressive tyres. Shimano XTR 8020 trail pedals. As we know, four pots can deliver a lot more power. The Neuron uses a four pot, 
but only on the front. This just goes to show how much difference a 4-pot makes and that they're definitely worth specking, but they're being very tactful and trying to find a balance between big mountain ability and all-day speed. A 30-tooth chainring on the front means you've got a range of gears for big days even when you're tired. A trail bike like this could be the answer for a lot of people. Versatility is the name of the game. A proper amount of suspension, bigger brakes and stopping power. You could cover a pretty broad spectrum of riding with this bike. Heavier, more robust tyres, it's a big mountain bike. Lighter XC tyres, an endurance machine. Maybe even nipping at the ankles of your downcountry bike. I would happily race a local cross country race on this with some lighter tyres and the next day riding the bike park. That's what's so great about the trail bike. It's just so versatile. In any spectrum of bikes, you get some that are more aggressive and some less so. It's the same with these bikes and thank goodness because different riders want different things. Those down country bikes are so capable that you often have to run as little as 15 to 20% sag. But throw in a progressive spring rate and a supported feel, you'd be surprised about what you can not only get away with, but also enjoy. This means that while somebody like you, Neil, who I believe has ridden a bike a little bit before can ride them up, down, over and through anything, they might sometimes be not quite as comfortable as a lightweight trail bike on big day rides. That's down country all over. Better bikes, better componentry, better geometry combined to make a better package. That's why people like me are revisiting the idea of shorter travel. It's also why a 130mm bike, like the Neuron, can play with bigger boys in the Enduro category. And pound for pound, the featherweight cross-country bike can surprise you with its capability. Come on now, Neil. Between friends, <laughs> admit you've just ruined a perfectly good cross-country bike. No. It's like putting a tow bar on a 911. Yes, that's a great idea. I've always thought it'd be a cool, <laughs> you know, stick a bike rack on the back of big lights on the front like a rally car. Brilliant. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think this is just a cross-country bike for people like me that like going downhill. Short stem, wider bars. Yes, more travel. Yes, do like that. Not too much. Still super lightweight. That's what I love about it. Pick it up, chuck it on the car. It's crazy light, but really capable down the hill. Two pot brakes, more than enough for the rolling hills of the sort of cross country riding that I do. So I love it. And what I do love about it is racing it. Oh, for Christ's sake, Neil, you're going to give me a migraine. Not everything is about racing. That's the cool thing, in my opinion, about those down country bikes, is it's cross country performance without cross country milliseconds. So you do again. like it, yeah. And it's time <laughs> for a race. <laughs> I'm only joking, Henry, it's not always about racing, but the BC Bike Race is a place where the down country bike is king. Technical trails demand that people ride cross country bikes with beefier tires, wider bars, shorter stems, because it's a super long race, but it rides really technical trails. For me, the down country bike is a refined specialist tool, great for the job. But Henry, isn't the trail bike just a jack of all trades, master of none? Jack of all trades, come on, Neil. <laughs> Not everyone has the opportunity to have a different bike for every occasion.
What a view. Lovely, isn't it? Pretty sick. So you spend a lot of time on your cross-country bike. I do, actually, yeah. Can you tell the differences between a cross-country bike and a down-country bike? How would you describe the difference? Yeah, I mean, I can, but only in what I've done to a cross-country bike, because this is my version of a cross-country bike, and I love it. You know, I, gone are the days for me of long stems and narrow bars. And yes, you do compromise a little bit on the most extreme of the climbs, but I don't mind that. I'd rather have it, you know, tacked onto the other end and be slightly better at the downhill side of it, so love it. Yeah. What about you? Can you tell the difference in a trail bike and I mean, a cross-country bike? I mean, I think, you know, I, sp I spend a lot of time on trail bikes. It's the type of riding that I love. I think a lot of trail bikes now are nibbling at the ankles of almost enduro bikes. I think something like a downcountry bike really, really does interest me. Yeah. But I think the trail bike is still so versatile. And for the UK riding, yeah. I've been riding a 29er, 130 mil like, a bit like this one over winter. It's such a versatile bike. Yeah, and I wonder if the downcountry label will stick. Who knows? Time will tell. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our GMBN store for some merchandise to get yourself kitted up for summer, winter, all year round. Nice one. Thank you very much, guys, and we'll see you next time. See ya.